blessed Sunday be with you, and the blessings of God, on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. I would like to introduce you to our guest reverend, our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Beth Hoffman. Beth is the pastor and teacher of the First Congregational Church of Elliot. It's the United Church of Christ as well. And as she is grateful for being with her faith community there for the past 10 years. She lives in Rochester, New Hampshire with her husband, Mark, and his proud mom of two adult children who give her lenses and kaleidoscopes for her spirituality every day. Her son, Gabe, often helps her out with music for worship these days, and her daughter, Lydia, has just moved to New Haven, Connecticut to begin the road to ordination at Yale Divinity School. She dreams of a call to serve as a church camp director. And Beth takes great delight in the mighty stories and powerful rituals of unpacking the word and tries to use the gospel to tell life and life to tell the gospels. In these pandemic days, she tries to keep her balance by prayer, song, and art while wearing a mask and a smile. She is thrilled to be invited to share in this Sunday morning with the gifts at Hammond Street Congregational Church to be with you. Beth hopes that we all find hope and strength in the way the church is being called to do a new thing. Please join me now in our call to worship. The day breaks and God does not let us go. The hour calls and God does not let us go. The evening falls and God holds us fast. Let us turn now to God in worship. God who never turns away from us. Please join me in our gathering prayer. God, you see us, you see our struggles, and you see our difficulties. You see our possibilities, and you see our promise. Connect the dots for us, O God, and soften the hard spots with your blessing. Call us in our wandering to hear you say our name. to hear you say our names. Mm. Satisfy our longings as with loaves and fishes and manna from heaven. For you are a good God, a God present in this scramble. And in the end, you always, always have a blessing. For this and so much more, we give you thanks through Jesus Christ. Amen.
call to confession. God is present to us, but we don't always feel it. God is good to us, but we can't always accept it. The fact is, there are things within and around us that attempt to step between us and our relationship to God's goodness. There are things we think, things that we do, that act to separate us from God. The church calls that sin. Let us confess our sins to God in the presence of each other. And we are in the presence of one another in the power of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy, I confess that sin grips me and I cannot break free. The sins in my mind, on my lips, in my acts done and even ignored, they stand between me and you. My entire heart is not always yours. My love of neighbor falls short. In the name of Jesus, have mercy on me. Grant me your renewing forgiveness and lead me on your paths of righteousness and I shall delight in you and I shall follow you, giving you glory to your holy name. Through Christ Jesus, amen. Receive this, the assurance of pardon from our Lord and love, Jesus. The God who gives all, the God who loves all, the God who forgives, forgives all. Through Christ our sins, every one of them, the sins of commission and the sins of omission, the sins we confessed with contrition, all are forgiven. By the grace of God, we are forgiven, alleluia.
people of God, gathered people of Hammond Street Church, I invite you to open your ears and open your heart and open your mind to hear the word of God this morning as it comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. In the fifth chapter, we hear these words. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are hunger, who hungry. Excuse me. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. Or in the same way that they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Gathered people of Hammond Street Church, I invite you to be with me in prayer. Holy and wondrous God, I ask that you give us the courage to wrestle a blessing from your word and the strength to take your word out into the world where we pray that the God of our mothers and fathers will be the God of our children. Amen. In the dark, silent shadows of 2 a.m., all kinds of things can go through your mind if you are awake. And if you as a young teenager, spent the evening getting in big trouble for back talking to your parents, not having enough common sense to apologize, and being just a little too big for your britches, too self-reliant, too self-righteous, too proud in that one moment of a parent-child argument, then at 2 a.m. <clears throat> when everyone is asleep, you are lying in your bed awake and you are feeling crummy, feeling as if things are completely out of hand, out of control, gone too far to take back. You are sick to your stomach maybe and as the shadows dance on the wall in a devilish moonlight waltz, you are all too aware that you are alone in the scary world. Trying to ignore the twist in your guilty gut, perhaps you pull the covers up to your face so that the edge of the comforter is right up to your nose and may actually bring some comfort to your morning then teenage heart. At least that's what I did when I was a young teen. In the dark, silent, in the, oh, I screwed up sort of night, I pulled the comforter up to my nose and I sneezed 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 and the night was no longer silent. Anyone who has known me for a while will tell you that I am not a one-time sneezer. And I am not one of those quiet, demure, petite sneezers. I am routinely known for six or seven sneezes in a row. But it is not uncommon for me to get stuck on a sneeze and reach into the 20s. One time, my daughter counted 36 consecutive sneezes. 
It's always been that way. I'm a sneezer. And so I shattered the quiet with some blanket dust in my nose and I began a midnight solo of achoo, achoo. At sneeze number three, I heard my mother's voice, the one that had scolded, yelled, and chastised me for my fresh mouth. She called out, Gesundheit, and I immediately felt better. The world uprighted itself and suddenly stopped spinning out of control. At sneeze number 11, I heard my baby sister call out, God bless you, from the next room. That same little sister that was earlier that night annoyed that I had ruined the family dinner and furthermore, the TV program that she was watching, I had ruined it with my sass and my teenage sarcasm and the fallout that had ensued. I heard her midnight words and I immediately felt warm and forgiven and loved. At sneeze number 21, my father yelled out down the hall in the most wonderful paternal voice ever, the voice that had told me that he had been disappointed in me, the voice that had said, you should know better than this, the very voice that I hated to hear angry. He yelled after sneeze 21, cut it out. And I did. Somehow the sneezing stopped, the guilt stopped, the sadness stopped. And I snuggled into my comforter as I snuggled into the comfort that I was loved. I was remembered. I was heard. In that achoo moment, when I was not in control, I was loved. I was valued, I was protected, I was forgiven, and I was worthy of being blessed. Today, in the gospel that we shared, we climb up a mountain with Jesus and we hear him proclaim blessings upon the people. Often known as the Sermon on the Mount or the Beatitudes, it is a litany of language that for many of us has become watered down over time. As we hear it so often, we see it on coffee mugs and t-shirts, we read it on posters, and we recall it at funerals. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek, the humble, the hungry, the ones who mourn. But hear it again good people of Hammond Street, good people of God, hear it with all the sermon strength and conviction that Jesus first gave it when his voice ran out, rang out on that mountain and broke the scary silence with authoritative solidarity. In the Beatitudes of Jesus, in the blessings, we are shown an attitude shakeup for the world. We are given an extraordinary window in how life is to be, can, can be, how it can be lived. This is such a powerful message because Jesus is speaking directly to the people who are on the outside, the people who are forgotten, the people whose voices are silent, the people who are dancing the devil's moonlight shadow waltz at 2 a.m. Jesus preaches that the kingdom of God is for those who really need it. Most often, I haven't said, heard it preached, that the Beatitudes are a list of commandments about how we should be and what we should do, or as a in-your-face kind of lecture about how to be the right sort of Christian, the merciful, the pure, the peacemakers, the humble, the persecuted. And this way of hearing this passage, it would be fine, except that we have a tendency to set impossible demands for ourselves, which when we don't achieve them, 
cause us to abandon doing anything at all, except maybe carrying the words around on a coffee mug. And when we do try to heed these instructions, we may feel as if we are failures because we couldn't make things better all by ourselves. We are so used to doing it alone, prideful in how to care for ourselves and those we love all alone. So that we find it extremely difficult to imagine a God who has prepared the way for us in a message of love. As Jesus delivers the Sermon of the Mount, the crowd gathers below him. He sees them all, the sick, the lame, the wounded, the lost, and the screwed up. Men, women, and children, ordinary people like you and like me. Not the powerful, not the perfect, not the prestigious. These are just ordinary people struggling to figure it out the best way that they can. And Jesus sets down and sets out to preach. He opens his mouth and the first thing that he says is, God bless you. And maybe this is our sore spot of struggle after all. It's hard to be blessed by anyone, let alone by God. How many of us feel sheepish when someone offers you a bless you after a sneeze or after seven sneezes? How many of us feel vulnerable when someone ends a visit or a conversation with, God bless you? It's a humbling, holy, kind of hard to take place to be, and it messes with our perspective on the world. Have you ever noticed that when you sneeze, you can't keep your eyes open? No matter how hard you try, how hard you try to keep your current vision, your eyes on the world, you just can't. You close your eyes in reflexive surrender and your breath is taken away. And when you open them back up, you're, new, you're looking in a new place, a new point, a, a new perspective. And then that is when the blessing is heard. And that is when it is needed. God bless. There's a woman named Diane who was a member of the church I served for a very long time, and she always took my breath away. She would come up half a flight of stairs to visit me in my study at the parish hall, and she was courageous with those stairs because she could barely walk, and she would normally use either double canes or a wheelchair. She would come up and she would chat for a bit, and then she would head back down the stairs and out into the world. And about halfway down, when she really should have been distracted by her steps and her sneakers and slipping, she would call back in a very authoritative way, God bless you, without fail. And right there in my study, I would have a humbling, ah chew moment where everything is turned around. I would close my eyes for a second when I heard her voice. And when I would open them, I would have a new mountaintop perspective, a new B attitude, a new gratitude that someone had offered me a blessing and somehow I was open enough to take it in. It's not as easy as it sounds. After all, we are intimately familiar with our faults and our limitations, our insecurities and our failures. And knowing ourselves this well, and knowing that God knows us even better. We may find it hard to believe that God loves us unconditionally. Very little, if anything, in our world is truly unconditional. We're used to paying for our mistakes, so it's unsettling and nearly inconceivable to imagine that God behaves differently, showering us with blessing apart from anything that we have done, earned, or deserve. If God shows up here, Jesus is saying, blessing the weak and the vulnerable, then God will be everywhere, showering all creation 
and its inhabitants with blessing. And we, we are called to help bless, just as we are called to be blessed. To have the dust and the discomfort of the hungry and the poor, the wounded and the wandering, the mourning and the meek, to have the dust of the world's injustices up our nose so that it makes us sneeze with vulnerability, so that our vision might be turned upside down and our perspective aligned with Jesus. Church, Hammond Street, be sneezers for blessings of comfort and inheritance and fullness and mercy and vision. These blessings are already ours. Right now, in the midst of our anxieties and our failures and our yearnings, Jesus' sermon says, blessed are, not blessed will be. My friends, we are a blessed people. And because we are so filled with blessing, we can graciously, generously, and energetically be a blessing to others. Every time that you worship together, every time that we pass the peace over our computers and our phones, every time we give of our offering, every time we pray, we are offering God's blessing. Every time we share a meal or write a note of thanks, we are sharing God's blessing. Every time we remember those ham and bean suppers, or we sing our hearts out in a virtual choir, or we have a drive-by parade in celebration of a life event, or we sit down for an hour and talk on the phone. Each time we six foot distance, and keep our church building closed. And each time we acknowledge the needs of those around us, we have an ah chu moment. And we are blessed. We are mountaintop blessed. So church, be sneezers. Let your vision be turned upside down. May you receive that blessing. May it be so always. God bless you. Amen. I ask you now to share your joys and concerns with the Holy Spirit as we are really together in our prayers. There are some of you who have shared your joys and concerns. Suzanne Philp let us know that she and Wayne are celebrating that Mariah, Alex, and Emma purchased a three-bedroom home in Gardner, Massachusetts. She and Wayne are helping them clean, paint, and then move in. Oh, blessings, blessings on that. There are prayers for all during this pandemic. For those who are in financial trouble, for those who are sick, or who have lost a loved one who is sick. We pray for our elected officials that they govern with compassion and with wisdom and with equity in mind, equity for everyone. And we pray for our congregation to stay together even when we are apart. Love has a power to do that. Walt Couples is at Winterberry Heights and Deb reports that he's happy there and his address is this, so go get pen and paper. His address is 932 Ohio Street here in Bangor, 04401. Roberta Seavey is asking for our prayers for the healing of her back and an increase in mobility. And just keep her in our minds and just envision her. And let all of your healing prayers go to go to that place in her back. Mm. Joni is at Eastern Maine Medical Center and is healing well. 
um, but she needs our prayers too. It's not easy when we end up in a hospital. So much in our lives change with it. You have prayers in your heart that you have either shared with others or you've just lifted them up to God. Know that they will be answered with great wisdom and always in the love of God. And let us pray. Holy and beloved God, in the power of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the, and the wisdom and presence of your Holy Spirit, you have heard these prayers and you know them, and you are sending healing and blessing. Your heart is in joy with everything that has happened to families, the goodness of new homes. We're going to just rejoice now for the healing that you're going to send. And all, all the hopes that people have. You are so glorious, God. It is your love. The love that holds us together and helps our prayers to be united. Give us wisdom as we pray for one another. Patience as we help one another. Help us always with the gifts of your spirit. Let us pray now in the words that Jesus gave us, the ones we know deep in our hearts. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
now the benediction. God's peace carry, keep, and hold you. God's love nourish, bless, and enfold you. God's spirit inspire, lift, and mold you. Almighty God, triune, holy, and blessed be with you now and forever. Amen.